Hey everyone, it's Billy again with Strictly Sales Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail. Listen, if you have not been down to Strictly Sail in Blue Ash, you gotta get down there. Um, I know not all the stores are open yet. Maybe you can go online. If you need anything for your kayak at all, if you're looking for a new kayak, you gotta go check them out. You can go online. I just went online last night and bought something. And guess what? I woke up this morning and already in my inbox was an email that they had shipped it out. I know, seems like I say this on every video, but it's true. Cole Brian Tacey down at Strictly Sale, he can tell you, I buy stuff online all the time. I bought a Yak Attack Panfish. Uh, it's a mount for my GoPro. And uh, I'm hopeful that it will be here tomorrow. This event was an online event and our online series is brought to you by Dakota Lithium. So if you haven't got a chance to check out Dakota Lithium, you gotta do that as well. They have that Powerbox 10. That's pretty amazing. All their lithium batteries, are they're lighter than those older batteries. So go check out Dakota Lithium as well. All right, guys, May 16th, we had the Buddy Bass, and the Buddy Bass was 43 teams that fished on five lakes. We had Mogador, Knox, Burrow, Cowan, and Lorimy. I'm gonna give you guys a lot of stats. Who had the big fish? Who were the big winners? How much money did they get? And all that. This is gonna be a great, a great uh, recap video. Can't wait, so you guys hang out with me. I got a lot of uh, cool notes here in my notebook. And um, oh, at the end of this video too, we're gonna do something new where Zach Carell has always been doing the podcast and we're gonna put the audio from the podcast at the end of this video. So Zach is gonna interview the winning team, the two anglers from the winning team and you're gonna hear all the information you could ever want from them. Uh, Zach does a great job, so stay tuned and listen to that at the end of the video. All right, so before we get into the winning teams and how much money they got, I wanna start out with some interesting facts. It's time for interesting stats. All right, out of the 43 teams, there were 16 fish that were caught in the 17 inch range. There were 12 fish caught in the 18 inch range, five fish, 19 inch range, and there were three fish caught in the 20 inch range. The big fish, even though we don't do um, big fish payout in online tournaments, um, it's still worth noting because this fish was a monster. Michael Becker was able to pull in a 20 and three quarter inch fish. Congratulations to Michael. That is a pretty big fish. So good job. Look at that picture. Whoa, that's a big fish. All right, so let's break it down by lake. Listen, if you didn't go to Mogador, I'm sorry, I didn't go to Mogador. But if you didn't go there, um, you missed out. It looks like they had an amazing day. So on Mogador, they caught 69 fish, average of 15.37. 14 teams went to Mogador, 69 fish. The second lake was Knox. Knox had 31 fish. The average was 14.73, and there were nine teams that fished on Knox. Baroque had 17 fish caught and 15.97 was the average, and there were five teams. And when I say caught, clearly I mean like on the board scorable fish. Cause I caught like five fish and only one was on the board. Cowan had 38 fish scored for an average of 15.079 and Cowan had nine teams fishing. Lormy had only one team fishing there. They caught one fish and it was 14.25. So hey guys, those are the interesting stats from this week. And again, congratulations to Michael Becker. He caught that monster. So good job. Hey guys, so let's jump into the who placed where and the winnings, how much money they got, how many inches they had. Since we had 43 teams, we had uh, four teams are gonna get paid. So coming in at number four is fluking around. Fluking around had 88 and three quarter inches. That was Derek Hollis and Donnie Miskinis. And Derek and Donnie will be taking home $206 to split between the two of them. So congratulations to Derek and Donnie. Fluking around, I like that. Okay guys, and third place goes to Fat Guys in a Little Kayak. And Fat Guys in a Little Kayak, I just wanted to say it again, because it's fun. Uh, 89.75 inches. That was Reese Stratton and Emmerich Moser. And Reese and Emmerich will be taking home $276. So congratulations to Reese and Emmerich. 
Richard, what's happening? Uh oh. You know, next year we should have a competition where the best team name gets gets something. I don't know what you'd get. Not money, but something. Okay, everyone, so second place is gonna go to Hobie Flippin. Hobie Flippin came in with 90 inches. That was Daryl Cornelius and Joe Minow. And Daryl and Joe will be taking home $448 to split between the two of them. Congratulations to Daryl and Joe with Team Hobie Flippin. All right, guys, and then first place goes to Angler Hollicks. Angler Hollicks at 92 inches is Robin Harrell and Adrian Salas. And Robin and Adrian will be taking home a big old check. Right here it is. I can prove it. $792. So congratulations to Angler Hollicks. Congratulations to Robin and Adrian. So amazing job. $792. Hey guys, if you want to continue to join in on the fun with the Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail, you can go on BuckeyeKayakFishingTrail.com and see what the entire schedule looks like. The coming up events that we have would be May 22nd through the 25th. That's this weekend, Memorial Day weekend. It's the Buckeye Blitz. And then we also have June 6th will be the Buttload of Bass. Both of those are an online event. And then the next tour series event we have is June 13th at Alum Creek. So hope to see you guys there. Stay tuned till the end of this video to uh, listen to the Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail podcast with Zach Carell and the winners, which would be uh, Angler Hollicks. That's Robin and Adrian. You're going to hear all about what happened on, on their trip. So you guys should stick around to that. And then if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. If you subscribe and you like the channel, it'll help us keep keep everything uh, current and relevant and um I want, to, I want to grow this channel for Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail and bring you guys the best content that we can. So I hope you guys like this and um, hope to see you guys again next time. So stay tuned. Don't leave yet. You got to listen to the podcast. So thanks, guys. See you next time. You're listening to Buckeye Kayak Fishing, the official podcast of the Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail. And tonight we have a very special episode. We have the winners of the Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail Buddy Bass event, sponsored by Dakota Lithium Batteries and Strictly Sailing Kayak in Blue Ash, Ohio. So uh, tonight's awesome, man. We had a lot of cool, a lot of people come out for this. It's always a popular event. Last year it was in July and it was burning up. So we moved it back a little bit this year. Um, right here, uh, actually in the middle of the spawn. <laughs> and it was a tough tournament for a lot of people. But um yeah, the, the, these guys, I have the two top winning teams, Hobie Flippin, <laughs> team name for number two, and then Angler Hollicks, the team name um, for the first place winner. Uh, they finished first place at 92 inches, um, Hobie Flippin in second place at 90 inches. So, uh, exciting episode, guys. So, tonight I have Adrian Solis, Daryl Cornelius, and Robin Harrell on tonight. Uh, Joe Mino couldn't make it. Uh, he's busy with stuff, so uh, uh, Daryl will be talking for him. So how's it going, guys? Good. Great. Pretty well. Awesome, awesome. So we'll start with Daryl. You guys finished here at um, second place at 90 inches. Uh, you caught 72 uh, inches of bass. Uh, your teammate, uh, Joe, he caught uh, 18 inches. So, man, you, you really put a good um, – um, you really did a good job of this tournament. <laughs> I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it was uh, no lie. I, I went six hours straight without a bite. Uh, Dude, it, it was, was rough, man. Yeah. Uh, most of my stuff uh, basically came in the morning and uh, what I would do is get the heaviest of mat. So the, the fish, I went out there and fished some prior to that. And the fish were up on beds, but they they were in their staging. They 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 the fish aren't even spawned out yet. So what happened? We had all this cold front, and then you had this heavy rain come in, and and the fish moved out. Yes, they did move back up later on in the day, but uh, all the fish that I found moved out in the heavy heavy mat off the bank in the spawning flats. So I got in like ten foot of water, and you find a heavy mat with a hole in it. That was a bed, because the grass wouldn't when you know 
grow up around the beds that they made. And plus they, they got in there and, and, and did what they had to do to make them. Well, every time I found them holes, I throw me a jig in there and uh, that's how I caught my, my main ones. And I didn't catch my last 19 inch fish until later on the day. Um, it was, it was a grind, but uh, like I said, the, those heavy mats is what did it for me in the morning and just finding them open, open pockets, you know, did you guys fish the full 16 hours? Mm, we went till about eight, uh, eight o'clock. Uh, yeah, I think 10 was the cutoff. Yeah, we, I think we were done and out by, by eight, eight thirty, something like that. What lake did you guys fish? Uh, we did Mogador. Mogador. Okay. Yeah. I think everybody uh, rocked it at Mogador. I was at Cowan myself and, uh, a lot of okay. people out there were struggling, but a few people caught some bass. They figured out the bite, but but every bite I had, they picked it up and spit it out, which kind of led me to believe they were on the beds. Um, well, like I said, I did see a lot of fish on beds, but me, I, I'm not I'm not much of a bed fisherman. Like I said, it's not that I don't do it, or you know, I'm I just not a big fan of it. But I do like how we do the catch photo release, so that's definitely a plus. You know, uh, if, if we do uh, have to pluck them off you know but uh that's i did get my last fish off of a bed and uh i caught that on a nico rig uh small finesse worm and uh how i do it is i take old uh uh a rig blades and i put an o-ring around the uh the small finesse worm and i put that blade underneath on the o-ring and it causes a flat and not only does that help with the flash, it helps me see it when I'm throwing it up on the bed. Because if I'm not throwing a white worm or anything, sometimes you have to throw a natural presentation. Well, I threw everything up on this bed, and nothing would touch this. Nothing. I mean, there was, an, there was two monster fish up on a bed, and they wouldn't touch it. As soon as I implemented that, it was it was right now. So that's, oh, that's how I got my, my last fish. That's a pretty interesting rig. <laughs> I like that, man. Yeah. Uh, so you knew going yeah. into this tournament that it was a good possibility that the bass were on the beds, and uh, it sounded like you were you had a game plan. Oh yeah, I I knew exactly what they were gonna do. Uh, not none of the none of the fish's tails were were beat up that I seen, and every fish that I seen was locked, y'all. Especially throughout the day, they they didn't want to mess with anything because they're staging. The fish that I found were staging. And uh, it, it was a morning bite for me, and the fish that, like I said, that I did find uh, were were full of eggs, and uh, they were they weren't even ready to ready to do anything. Now I'm sure other people found different stories, but for me, that's what I found. Well, it sounds like water clarity was pretty good. Uh, about how deep, how, how far was the visibility? Uh, I could see at least seven, eight foot. Oh, in areas, yeah. but the grass was so heavy in Mogador. So, you know, we, we had a lot of grass there because we didn't have a heavy winter to kill off any of the grass. So that the grass in there is real thick right now. It always gets that way every year. But it, for this time of year, it was definitely really, really thick. Do you fish Mogador quite often? Yeah. Oh, sweet, man. So you probably had some honey holes, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some there's some good spots in there. Oh, man, nice. Yeah, you kind of told us how you caught most of your fish. Uh, what was your biggest one? Uh, 19. I had two 19s, uh, 17 and three quarter, and then uh, I had a 16 and a half, and then Joe had the uh, the 18. And uh, Joe caught his 18 um, on a chatterbait. Oh, wow, man. So you caught yeah. both 19s on, on your Ned rig set up? Yeah, and a jig. Uh, either small finesse jig or or that Nico rig. It's basically the same thing as a wacky rig. It's just uh, how I how I presented it. I got gotcha. you. Well, that's awesome, man. Uh, congratulations on your placing, uh, second place, man. You got into the money, and I like your yeah. name, Hobie Flipper, man. I love Hobie kayaks. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they're they're good kayaks. Awesome, man. Well, congratulations. So. Uh, the, well, the first place team, Angler Hollicks, 
uh, Adrian and Robin. So Adrian put up uh, 54 inches and Robin put up 38 inches. So congratulations on that, guys. Um, what lakes did you guys fish? We'll start with Robin here. And I guess a lot of your answers will be the same, but <laughs> we'll see what we can, what kind of yeah. information we can get out of you. <laughs> we fished Mogador as well. Oh, nice, man. So you had nice conditions. What was your basic strategy out there? Um, basically, we got out on the lake, um, you know, about 10 minutes late from uh, line-in time. It was really, really, really foggy. Um, I had been to Mogador last year in the Buddy Bass, so I had really liked the lake when I was there. So I had asked Adrian if he wanted to come up and uh, fish that with me, and he was all for it because he had never been there. So the one spot that we went to, I went to last year as well, and I did fairly okay. Um, so it rained the night before, and our strategy, strategy was pretty much completely different. Um, rained the night before where we went. It was a cove that had a, um, a creek bed coming in, a creek, little creek channel coming in. And okay. the water, which in that lake is normally really clear, this water was really muddy. And then just to top it off was um, shad spawn. And this cove was full of shad. Um, I don't even, I don't even think we caught anything under 16 inches. And we threw back so many fish just trying to upgrade. I noticed the, uh, the spawn shad at Cowan too. Uh, ma'am, they were just flopping around all over the banks out there, uh, kind of doing the dirty. <laughs> well, the thing was, is we went and tried to go into the clear water. Um, uh, and then that's when everything got locked jaw was the clear water. So uh, it seemed that the muddy water helped us out a whole lot. So you, that was the, you were fishing the muddier part of the lake. Yes, sir. Oh, Wow. So Daryl was out there and had seven foot of visibility, and you were on the muddy end of it. I got gotcha. you. What were uh, what were you throwing most of the day? I'll let Adrian answer that if you want. Oh, did you guys throw the same thing? Yes, sir. Oh, go ahead, Adrian. Yeah, we started with the uh, jackhammer at the beginning. We didn't get any bites there, so we quickly switched to a spinner blade. Just a swim bait with the splint, uh, the blade on it. I think it was just a willow blade, and yeah, yeah. Not even two or three casts after that, we caught our first fish. And it was like um, Robin was saying, on the muddier water. So we kind of picked that, that up real quick, and we kind of kept the same strategy. And that pretty much worked out through the whole day. And they, But just like the second place team did, we did end up, after a while, not catching any fish for a couple hours. And then it started picking back up at the end of the day. Absolutely. Wow. So you guys found something that worked and stuck with it. You guys are right. gang banging. Well, I went off to, I, I left Adrian there and, and I said, Hey, um, I'm going to go off. I know a couple other spots that I want to check. See, when I was at Mogador last year, there was a lot of lilies and I was hoping for the lilies again, but it was summer. So that made it, you know, different. Um, but uh, I went off to a couple different places that I knew about to check. What color was working again? What'd you say? Adrian, what color was that? It was a shad color. I think it was a blue pearl or something like that. Okay. Yeah, you saw the shad spawn in and through the shad color. Uh, those work pretty good in muddy water, too. I've been throwing a lot of shad colors this year in the muddy water. Absolutely. What was your biggest fish, uh, Adrian? 18 and a quarter, I believe. Nice. Man, you guys got some hogs out there. That's it was awesome. it was impressive. I, I was very happy most of the day. <laughs> yeah, did you guys notice bass on the bed or had any issues with that? We looked. Um, we seen some beds, but there were no bass on the beds. Um, I would like to go there real soon again and because uh, I have some other strategies and things like that because I think the beds uh, were probably a little further out, like Daryl said, uh, you know, the holes in the grass, we did notice that w as long as we stayed on the weed line uh, with our bait, that's where we were pulling the fish from. 
So I'm thinking that maybe that they that the beds weren't as shallow as what we would have thought they would have been in the clearer water uh, versus out there in the sanctity of the grass. Well, you know, I know I know that, you know, bed fishing is kind of controversial and it's kind of hard to schedule tournaments around the, the, the spawn because they basically spawn off of water temperature. And, you know, that could be late. That could be early. It could be a different time every year. But definitely when they're on their bed, that could be challenging to, uh, to catch. So I respect anybody that, you know, that caught uh, a limit and I caught a good limit in this tournament. Uh, you definitely de- deserve to win. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, how long was your commute there? Where did you Where did you guys drive from? Adrian had a long drive. He actually drove to me in Perrysville, and then from my house, it's about an hour and twenty minutes. And he comes from uh, Lancaster, right, Adrian? That is correct. Wow. So I'm That's not sure how long. far it was for him to get to me, but he definitely, and we stayed almost the whole time. Um, he definitely was a trooper. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to ask you that next if you guys stayed the whole day. So you guys started at uh, 6 a.m. and finished at 10? <laughs> Just about. We probably got out right as dark started to fall. That's awesome. Congratulations, guys. Uh, you guys did a terrific job. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming on the podcast tonight. Tell me. Tell everybody how you won. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, how many Buckeye events have you guys won? I know I've had Daryl on here. I've had uh, Robin on Yak Legion before. Um, Adrian, have you won any events? Uh, I got in close. I think the closest I gave was was third place, but this is definitely my first one. I know, uh, Robin, you won the crappie event last year, right? I did, and um, and then I got third in the Ironman. And then I, I was in the top 15 of points last year. Um, But uh, this year, Adrian and I also did the buddy slam and we placed third. Wow, man, you guys are kicking butt. Thank you. What about you, Daryl? Uh, I, uh, this is my, actually my first second place, uh, I never even got a first place and uh, it's, it's come. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to say this, at least overall individual out of 83 anglers, I came in first. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. So, but, right no, I mean, you have. yeah, your, your confidence is what it's all about, you know? And, and like I said, just meeting people and going out and fishing with everybody, that, that means even more to me, you know, meeting everybody and hanging out and uh, the camaraderie with this sport is just unbelievable so oh i agree with you 100 percent, man i love the trail and i'm glad to see you guys are common names in the buckeye kayak fishing trail um what's the main reason why you fish the trail i mean what keeps you guys coming back we'll start with you daryl that's my church <laughs> yes sir <laughs> amen <laughs> so yeah i just uh that and and, and tournaments you know i I love going out and and just fishing with a couple buddies or or my father you know and and just getting out and going but there's something about the tournaments that i don't know why it's just it's so much fun i guess maybe the challenge of seeing where you're at what you can do and uh and and again you just meet a a a bunch of great group of of anglers so oh i love it man Uh, how about you robin what's your reason what keeps you coming back um sanity it keeps me off of a water tower with a rifle (laughs) (laughs) well that's a good thing i'm glad glad you found a a hobby that keeps you out of trouble (laughs) right no um fishing is life for me i'm you know i'm originally from florida so uh i moved up here to ohio and thought i was going to be leave the you know my whole heart down there and uh slowly and steadily i have been um really 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 impressed with the fisheries we have here in ohio and um yeah bass fishing is a whole lot harder here than it is down in florida um just about anybody can throw out a a worm and catch a bass in florida but uh here you you gotta you gotta really work sometimes really hard for it um i've been doing it my whole life and uh that's that's just it's my respite i luckily have a 
wonderful man that supports me full heartedly on it. And, um, I, I like the competition of the tournaments. I never was into the kayak tournaments until, um, not last year. I, fi- I fished like the last three or four tournaments of the year prior with the BKF team. And then, um, and then I came back last year for a full year. Uh, but my very first one was through fin feather fur at Charles mill Lake. And I rented a kayak from the Marina and, uh, entered this tournament and placed third in it. And there was probably 25 or so people in it. I was like, cause I did have a bass boat, but I had sold my bass boat when I moved back to Florida from Ohio here. And, uh, I was like, oh, wow, you know, I, I love this. This this is amazing. It was just, it was a pedal kayak. It was just my, it was actually my first time really being out on a kayak, let alone fishing out, off of one. And, uh, but I've been, like I said, fishing my whole life. And ever since that, I've been hooked and I've, I've been on it. I've this um, starting to spread out now, though. Uh, <clears throat> member of KBF, I'm looking to get into some other tournaments, maybe in some of the other states, like maybe down home and things like that. So I'm, I'm gearing up here. It's so much fun to go out of state and compete too. I love our local trail here and, uh, I fished the Cincinnati kayak fishing trail as well. And, uh, I fished, uh, the Hobie Bass open went to Gunnersville last year, oh going to a new place and experiencing a new lake. And that's the first time I've ever seen red dirt in my life was down there <laughs> right. and armadillos running around. And uh, I loved it that the whole experience of that. And, uh, you know, 2020 with the COVID-19 stuff, man, it really put a damper on everybody's plans this year. Cause I had a lot of plans. I was going to go out of, out of state quite a bit and compete and, uh, it's just <laughs> this dang virus ruined everything, you know. <laughs> yeah. So Adrian, what keeps you coming back, man, to the Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail? I think everybody covered pretty good points. I mean, we definitely love the camaraderie. We love to fish, and we definitely love the competition, right? But I think what does it for me is definitely just being out there on the water. You know, it could be a really bad day, or it could be a really good day, but just being out there on the water fishing, that's what it really is about, you know? Just being out there, enjoying the scenery, enjoying the wildlife, being one with nature, that's me right there. That's what oh, keeps man. me back, for sure, so. Love that answer. I've seen that's... some pretty cool things out there before, too. There's always something new. It seems like I always see something new. Like, I was just at East to West Harbor a few weeks ago, and I saw a mink running down the bank. Mm. And, uh, you know, you don't see mink down here in the south too often. They are down here. I'm a bit of a trapper, so I, you know, I know they're down here, but you just don't see them out a whole lot. And to see one running down the bank while I was up there at East Harbor, man, that was amazing. I loved it. It's just little moments like that make this sport uh, so, so special. Right. Eagles, things like that. I've seen deer on the river. I, You name it, I've seen it. it it's It just takes your breath away. I love seeing eagles. We Stone Lick Lake up here, for anybody who wants to go bird watching, there's two bald eagles that nest there. And every time I go fish that lake, they're they're flying around. So it's a small lake. They're easy to find. And, uh, man, they're beautiful animals. So I know we mentioned the angler standings. Uh, Daryl Cornelius, he was at number one. Uh, you put up 72 inches with your two 19s, a 17 and a half, 16 and a half. Good job, man. Uh, Reese, uh, Reese Stoughton, uh, hopefully I didn't but- butcher your name. Uh, his biggest fish was 18 and uh, three quarters, 18 and a half, 17 and a 15 and three quarters. He finished at 70 inches. Derek Hollas, um, he finished with 69 and a quarter inches. His biggest was 17 and three quarters, 17 and a half, 17 and 17s. He caught solid 17s on the board. Um, um, Clint Car- uh, Carnahan, he won um, fourth place at 68 and a half inches. And uh, Tim Crabtree at fifth place at 64 and a half inches. So these guys put up some big fish. I see Clint here put up a 20 and a quarter. And um, Tim's biggest fish was an 18. And that's a, that's impressive stuff, guys. That's awesome. And before we end this tonight, I kind of want to end. Uh, I'm kind of kind of want to go over the the final list of names for all the teams out here uh, that participated because these are always amusing to watch and uh, to hear. Uh, first place was Angler Alex. Second place Hobie Flippin. 
Third place is Fat Guys in a Little Kayak. <laughs> <laughs> Fat Guy in a Little Coat. Chris Farley, man, I miss that. Fluking around, Hobie Hog Hunters. Face down, bass up. <laughs> uh, GPG, two guys, one kayak. Uh, Team Ramrod, dazed and confused. <laughs> I like that. It's a great movie. Bass to mouth. <laughs> Mogadorians, <laughs> I wonder what lake they fished. Creations <laughs> on the credit. <laughs> Fish on. Dirty 330, I like that. Yakheads, not again. Big lips, uh, bearded bobbers. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, my buddy Christian and Justin were OPH outdoors. Uh, Bass addicts, double J, deuces, a tale of two Tims. <laughs> Ripping lips, I knew it. Hook setters, better together, aka Princess and the Frog. You know that was a couple fishing together. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. Yeah, that was definitely a husband and wife team. Bass and Habits, uh, the Caster Baiters, uh, like uh, Ripping Lips, he's Billy and I'm Bo, uh, the other guys, No Blank Ninnies, Hunting for Dummies, ugh. this is getting along, Team Dumb Bassers, Sick Fishing, Fishing Farmers, Paul Bunyan, uh, Fishing and Living, Yak Legion, Justice Bates, Pro Staff, and fun stuff. So 43 total teams. Yeah, that's awesome. A lot of funny names. I think my favorite last year for the Buddy Bass uh, was Prestige Worldwide. And I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised <laughs> nobody nobody did that this year, man. That, that was, a, that was the best name. I don't know who that was. So if you guys listen to the podcast, uh, send me an email. I want to know who you are, man, because I love that. I loved your team name. <laughs> Well, sweet guys, Is there any shout outs you want to give before we end this? Starting out with Daryl. Uh, no, I want to congratulate uh, Robin and Ann, uh, Adrian for their first place. Congrats, you guys. Thanks, man. I'll be seeing you Thank soon, you. I think, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll have to uh, get together on our, our, uh, our next tournament here. We got our bracket brawl to do, so uh, – We'll be uh, getting in touch with each other and getting that figured out. And uh, also, I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Joe Mino. Uh, he uh, he definitely helped me out because even without that 18-inch, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So I want to give a shout-out to him. So much appreciated, Joe. Awesome. And congratulations again, man. You, got, you did a terrific job, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. What about Robin? What do you got? You got a shout-out you want to give? Yeah, I definitely want to give a shout out to my partner there, uh, Adrian. Uh, couldn't have done it without him. Uh, we work real well together, bouncing ideas off each other and um, learning new things from him. And I hope he learns things from me. And it's just been a real good uh, combination there the last couple of buddy tournaments. Um, I want to say a shout out to my local uh, outfitter, Finn Feather Fur. They're always there for me with my needs. Uh, Fisherman Central, shout out to them. Uh, they went above and beyond for me for some baits uh, last minute. And uh, you guys there at uh, BKFT for all your hard work and doing the judging and, and scoring and going through all those bass because I know it was pretty tough uh, if people weren't culling their own fish, so on and so forth. So, yeah, that's – and 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 my old man because, of course, he, he – uh, <laughs> takes care of me and uh, supports me wholly and for you too zach uh for letting me on oh well, thank you Daryl. Okay. uh congratulations on on your second place there buddy thank you yeah congratulations again robin it's always fun talking to you i always enjoy uh seeing you at the tournaments and chatting with you great you too so, buddy so how about you adrian you got a shout out yeah likewise thank for you guys for having me on the on the podcast right daryl robin thank you guys for fishing the tournament everybody else that fishes the tournament thank you guys for fishing it it wouldn't be a tournament if you guys wouldn't be there you know so definitely thanks everybody for the ability to put this together guys so it's been pretty good so it looks like we're heading in the right direction and looking forward to fishing some more tournaments after this Oh hell yeah! I hope to have you guys on here again, and I'm sure I'm sure we will. I'm definite in that. 
So I want to thank everybody for listening and congratulations again to everybody. Uh, just a terrific job. Like we mentioned earlier, it was tough fishing and these teams, they really brought, uh, brought it together. So congratulations. Thanks for listening. And, uh, tight lines. Keep your toilet paper stocked. <laughs> Hey everyone, to find the 2020 Top 50 standings presented by Keel Armor, go to BuckeyeKayakFishingTrail.com. The standings are presented by Keel Armor, not only for the top standings for the whole series, but also for the Buddy Bass. So go check out those standings and hope to see you guys next time.